One of the biggest questions we have in AML treatment is how best to consolidate patients who've achieved a remission with initial induction therapy, whether that induction therapy is with standard 3 plus 7 or perhaps for an older patient with a hypomethylating agent. The purpose of consolidation therapy in general is to clear the undetectable blasts so that the patient can be cured. What's the best way to do that? I would submit that for the average non-older patient with AML, for the average one, allogeneic transplant is going to be the way to go. There's a relatively smaller subset of patients who can, quote, get away, unquote, with not having to go through the rigors and risk of a transplant. The patients in whom I definitively would not think of allogeneic transplanting in first remission are those with core binding factor cytogenetic abnormalities in version 16 and translocation between chromosome 8 and 21, with the exception that those who have a CKIT mutation do worse and maybe they should be transplanted. The only group of patients with normal cytogenetics who I would consider not transplanting in first remission are those with a FLT3 ITD wild type status who also have an NPM1 mutation. This also is a bit controversial because it sort of depends on the NPM1 uh, status at uh, minimal residual disease status at remission. Again, that harkens back to the controversy over the use of minimal residual disease. To make a long story short, uh, if a patient has either a match SIB donor or a good unrelated adult match, I favor transplant, except in those patients that have CKIT wild type 821 and inversion 16 cytogenetics, and in those normal chromosome patients who have NPM1 mutations but don't have a FLT3 ITD mutation. Once you achieve a complete remission in a patient, the, the problem is how to, to prevent relapse of the disease because relapse are very, very frequent. Roughly, complete remission rate, depending on the patient population, but complete remission rate is, is above uh, uh, 75%. So once you get a complete remission, the problem is to prevent relapse. You can do that by several techniques or treatments. The first is to continue intensive chemotherapy. The second is to propose transplantation, hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. Either autologous, that is, has been done in the previous years, or mostly uh, allogeneic stem cell transplantation, when you can identify a donor of stem cell for your patient in particular. So the, the, this is a big decision after complete remission achievement which patients should be transplanted and which not. And this is based now on, 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 uh, on genomic analysis. So genomic mutational status allowed us to define favorable risk AML as opposed to what we called intermediate risk AML or unfavorable risk AML. This is based on mutations. And, and only patient with intermediate or unfavorable risk are candidates for stem cell transplantation in first remission because the other ones, the patient with favorable risk AML, the relapse rate is not so high and, and, and you cannot propose allogenic stem cell transplantation which is associated with, with a, a, a transplant related mortality to the patient with a relatively low risk of relapse. So everybody agree maybe not everybody, but most of the groups and, and the doctors agree with this way of, of proposing transplantation in new patients. Uh, when uh, you need to, to give consolidation chemotherapy after remission achievement, there is no really standardized way to do that. Uh, what is known is that intensification of the dose have been beneficial to the patients. But the number of courses you have to, to give to a patient after remission achievement, and, and the exact composition of, of, the, of these courses in terms of drugs and, and dosage is not standardized. Uh, what we are using in my country, in France, is very, very uh, simple. It's based on three courses of high-dose citarabine, so based only one one single drug, citarabine, at high dose, given during three courses. 